My old friend taught me that lesson vividly back in 1900, what, 1933. There was a deep depression in this land. Many of you are too young to remember it, but I am almost now 67. I went through the deep depression back in New York City. I was a dancer, and who would pay a dancer when they couldn't eat? All the theaters were closed. I don't think more than three theaters out of 50 were open in Times Square. So who wanted the dancer? I would have danced for anything for a meal, and no one wanted to pay a dancer. So what would I do? I wanted to go to my little island called Barbados. And I had no money, but I when I said no money, I mean no money. Not just a little bit, but none. I said to my friend Abdullah, Ab, I would love to go to Barbados. He said to me, you are in Barbados. I said, I am in Barbados? He said, yes, you are now in Barbados. I didn't quite understand what he was telling me. I learned it afterwards. He was telling me that if I want something, I must tell at that moment that I want it, assume that I have it. I want to go to Barbados. I am in Barbados. So this night when I sleep, I sleep in Barbados. How? In my imagination. And how do I know I'm there? Think of New York City where physically I'm sleeping and see it to my north, 2,000 miles, northwest of where I am in Barbie. Well, the months went by and I didn't see any evidence. I said to him, you know, Ab, if I don't make the next boat out, well, no planes were flying, no commercial planes were flying in those days, I can't go to Barbados. He said to me, who said you are going to Barbados? You are in Barbados. You can't discuss how you're going to Barbados when you are already in Barbados. Then he walked straight to his room and slammed the door in my face, which was not an invitation to follow him. If you knew him, that's how he taught me. I am asleep as though I am in Barbados. And when I went to bed, though in New York City, I had assumed that I am actually in Barbados and see New York City, not under me, but to the north of me, 2,000 miles. And I woke within 48 hours after that moment, and under my door was a letter. from my brother Victor. And in that letter, he enclosed a small little draft, fifty dollars. He said, I have told the steamship company, the Furnace Witty Company, to issue you a ticket and charge it to me. The fifty dollars is simply, if you want some little thing, like a suit of clothes, in those days you could buy a suit for twelve dollars. A fairly decent suit. You could buy a pair of shoes for three fifty or four. But he said the fifty dollars just for anything you may need to get aboard the ship. But sign the chits, I'll meet the ship and pay all expenses, and I will pay all the tips. So it's not for tips aboard the ship. I went down to the place and I told them what 
my letter said. I read, read my letter to them. They said, Mr. Goller, we only have steerage from now on. But when we get to St. Thomas, the Virgin Islands, you may have first class because someone disembarked in St. Thomas. I accepted it. I went back to my friend Abdullah and I told him, Ab, it worked. I'm going on the 6th of December, but I have to go steerage until we hit St. Thomas and then we go first class to Barbados. You know what he said to me? He said, who is talking of going to Barbados? You have gone to Barbados and you went first class. Well, what are you going to do with a man like that? I went straight to the boat on the morning of the 6th, expecting that I would go steerage to, uh, to the Virgin Islands, when the man said to me, Mr. Goddard, we have a nice surprise for you. We had a cancellation, and so now you're going to first class. He wasn't surprised. I wouldn't even call him to tell him, because he was not given that way. He was trying to teach me a lesson. You believe in God, believe in me also. But the one speaking is God. It's the God in you, your own wonderful human imagination. If you say, I believe in God, everyone here believes in God. But do you believe in your own wonderful human imagination as God? If the word God conveys the sense of an existent something outside of you, you have the wrong God. Because you are the temple of the living God. And the Spirit of God dwells in you. Well, if he is in me, find out who he is and where he is. Well, I have found him to be my own wonderful human imagination. That's the God in me. It's the God in you. And may I tell you, he cannot fail. He will not fail. But here on this level, we are the operant power when it comes to the law. When it comes to the promise, that is coming regardless of the life we live in this world. Whether I be rich or poor, be the judge or the one being judged, the murderer or the victim, regardless of what part I play in this world, the promise is not conditioned. It is unconditioned. God promised to redeem himself when he became man. So my fitness for the kingdom of God is not the condition when I'm making myself good, it is the consequence, not the condition of his choice when he called me into the kingdom. So let no one frighten you that you're doing things that's going to stop you from entering the kingdom. It is not conditioned by anything you do in this world. The only condition is on the law. I can say that if I go in a certain direction, I will not encounter certain things. If I dare to assume that I am what I want to be, and I am faithful to that assumption, it will come to pass. If I am not faithful to it, it will not come to pass. If I don't assume that I am it, it will not come to pass. So I am the offering power when it comes to the law. But when it comes to the promise, that is coming regardless of what you do or where you are or anything of this world. 
everyone will be redeemed. But everyone. But here when it comes to the law, spend all your time while you were here, because the other is working, it's coming. So while you are here, take the law and try to understand it and try to apply it wisely. Why not live well? Why not live graciously? Why not be a kind person, a generous person in the world? Why not be a gentleman? Why not be a lady? These are tremendous accomplishments for man and for a woman in this world. So I say to everyone, while you are here, find out what the law is all about. Because you can't deceive yourself, because the law will not allow you to. As you reap the things in this world, you may, not deny, you may deny that you planted them, but it couldn't happen by accident. So be not deceived, God is not mocked. For as a man sows, so shall he reap, and he is reaping everything morning, noon, and night. I may not remember my sowing and deny the harvest that is mine, but it's there and I've got to accept it. Let me now try to remember when did I plant this. Maybe I can't bring it back. We have very short and faulty memories. And I can't quite remember when I planted that seed. By the morning's paper, as you read these horrible stories, would tell you when you planted it. You do not know the characters spoken of in the paper, yet you react. And that reaction was in itself the planting of the seed. You pass judgment on those that you read about. You read the gossip of the paper and you're passing judgment. And all of your imaginal reactions are planting seeds. Instead of spending your wonderful time and investing it by, say, reading the Bible or reading a poem, read something that is altogether lovely, you spend our time on the paper, or the radio bulletin, or the TV, and all day long we're simply putting into our mind ideas that must come to harvest. And when they come, we deny that we plant them. Here, on this principle of the law, you can be what you want to be in this world. I don't care what the world will tell you. You can start from scratch. And if you dare to assume that you are wanted in this world, you will be wanted. I am not a member of any club in the land. And yet, here, I am an American citizen today by adoption. And yet, wonderful men and women in this land have never been allowed to enter certain clubs. I'm speaking of clubs I know well back in New York City. And yet, I, a stranger, have gone as an honored guest to almost every one of them. Because I never barred myself. It never occurred to me that I didn't have all the qualifications to enter as a guest. I have no desire to become a member. None. Yet I have gone to all of these clubs as a guest of those who were members. They came to my meeting and asked me for dinner and they took me to the club. Or asked me for some other purpose to go to the club. So, not a thing in me allowed me to be barred. 
because I didn't bar myself. You can go any place in this world if you don't put these barriers on yourself. It's entirely up to you. God in you is your own wonderful being called your human imagination. In the four weeks that I'm gone, practice it morning, noon and night. And long before the four weeks, you should show the fruit. I'm serious about it. You should bear the fruit of planting now. Not everything takes a month. Not everything takes a year to grow. Some things come up overnight. And you can plant it now, this very moment, by daring to believe that you are what at the moment reason denies and your senses deny. And actually feeling. Give it the tones of reality. And then drop it. You don't pick it up tomorrow morning to see if it's growing. You accept it. And in its own good time, it comes to fruition in your world. That is the law.